we are used to distinguish between a public sector and the private sector of the economic system, of the social system, of the of human cooperation. But we have to realize that this uh, distinction is not between uh, two groups or two sectors, two sections that are uh, uh, from the point of view of the importance of human action of the same weight. There is, on the one hand, human cooperation. Human cooperation is different from the individuality, let us tell, it takes this word, of the uh, primitive ages, pre-human ages, of the conditions of the animal kingdom and so on. What make, what distinguishes men and what brings about all human civilization and everything that men have produced is cooperation of people. Cooperation, that means that everybody tries to contribute something to the improvement of human conditions and not only for himself but also for others and in the expectation that these others will uh, do the same thing and will make it possible for him to enjoy things which they couldn't have enjoyed if they had been independent and left to their own activities and their own forces. Cooperation of men is the thing that brings about civilization and all the improvement of human conditions which we are enjoying in the life of civilization. <coughs> and this is the market. That means it's a state of affairs in which I am giving something in order to receive something from you. I don't know how many of you have some inkling or idea of the Latin language, but in Latin there was already long ago the best description of this situation in the words do ut des, I give in order that you should give. You know. I contribute something in order that you should contribute something else. This exchange, this cooperation, which is necessarily exchange, needs for reasons which it is not necessary to explain, some medium of exchange. That means the individual who wants to receive something definite from somebody else may not be able at the instant to receive precisely the things which he wants and so he is satisfied for the time being with the reception of something which he will later use in order to bring about the acquisition of the thing which he really wants. A medium of exchange. And this medium of exchange is like all conditions concerning the activities of men, a product of the individual's actions. It is not something what can be freely manipulated by the government. We have the uh, <coughs> uh, 
Idea that the uh, uh, institutions of men are either the market, the exchange between individuals, or the government, the institution, which in uh, the mind of uh, uh, many people is something superior to the market and that could exist in the absence of the market. The truth is that the government that is the recourse to violence, necessarily the recourse to violence, cannot produce anything. Everything that is produced is produced by the activities of the individuals and is used on the market in order to receive something in exchange for it. Money or the medium of exchange. Money or the medium of exchange is something that the individuals are choosing in order to facilitate the exchange of commodities. And the government interference with the market and with the money results only or appears only in cases in which the individuals are not prepared to do what they have promised to do voluntarily. People believe that uh, or assume that it is the government that has been responsible for the development of money. In the decades preceding the First World War, when many countries, and especially in Germany, people were uh, uh, producing all the doctrines that finally resulted in the tremendous catastrophes of the big and great wars, uh, there acquired a German economist great fame by declaring and teaching again and again money is a product of the activities of the government. Uh, I have not to, the time to deal very much with it. I want only to say this doctrine resulted in Germany in the complete breakdown of the monetary system. And this doctrine will always again result in the same uh, uh, outcome uh, whenever it will be tried. Money is not something that the government creates. Money is a medium of exchange, something that people, when they cannot attain uh, when they cannot directly attain by giving away what they have produced uh, in order to receive what they want to consume, accept for the time being as a medium of exchange with the intention to exchange it at a later date against the thing which you really want. We have the uh, <coughs> problem that uh, misleads the thinking of all of many people. But unfortunately, also, the thinking of those people who are operating our governmental and political activities. This is the idea that the quantity of money counts. That it is better, it is uh, for the individual certainly better to have more money than to have less money. But it is not for the whole 
economic system. If you increase the quantity of money, you do not improve the conditions, you uh, only uh, ch change something in the exchange ratio between the uh, uh, individuals evaluation and those of the thing. I want to make this uh, more uh, uh, clearer by pointing out to a very simple case taken out of our daily affairs. The government wants to improve the conditions of some of its employees. It wants to pay higher salaries to its employees. As the government itself does not produce anything, the only method for the government which could result in uh, uh, success is to tax the people to take away from one group of people and to give it to the government employees. There is no other method. As the, the government does not produce anything, the government, the, uh, everything that is produced and everything therefore that is consumed is produced out by the activities of the individuals. Now there is for the government only one method available. It has to take away from one group of the people and to give it to the other group of the people. There is no possibility for the government to improve the uh, conditions of the government employees in another way than in taking away from the rest of the population and therefore impairing their conditions. Then what happens is that the prices, there's no reason for changing in the prices, you know. One, if the government uh, takes away something, taxes away, then the taxpayer is forced to restrict his expenditure. And those people to whom the government gives the higher salaries are now in a position to buy what these other people lose to buy and can no longer buy because they had to pay the taxes. <coughs> this would be the method that government can resort to if it wants to change the situation on the market. But there is another way, another method, and the government uses this method. The government increases the quantity of money. All the evils under which we are suffering in our market conditions every day are due to the fact that the government's belief that it is very uh, permissible and uh, natural way to increase the power of the government to spend to produce the money. In order to spend more, the government practically uh, have nothing else to do than to give an order to a printing office, print the quantity of money and give it to us. If private citizens do this, the government doesn't like it. You know. The government doesn't like it if every individual uh, would uh, print the money he needs. You know. But the government does it. And this is the monetary problem. Uh, we have the, the uh, uh, increase in the quantity of money. 
the increase in the medium of exchange, the quantity of the media of exchange, cannot improve conditions, cannot change conditions. Otherwise, then by making it possible for some people to pay higher prices and to buy more, therefore, and to other, at the expense of other people who are forced to restrict their spending and to buy less. And this is, I would say, this is the whole situation and the whole problem. Uh, the uh, uh, governments have some wonderful uh, terms introduced in order to explain this. They call it, for instance, deficit spending. The government taxes, and let us say that we are talking about a fantastic small country which uh, uh, in which the uh, uh, total amount of government revenue, let us say, is uh, by taxes, one million of something. Yes, but the government wants to spend two millions. Uh, the government adds to the million of units it has taxed away from the citizens a second million which it has printed especially for this purpose. And then the result is that an increased quantity of money on the market is exchanged against a not increased quantity of real goods, of consumers' goods, and so on. And this means that the prices are must necessarily go up. The government uh, has a group of uh, learned men who try to uh, conceal this very simple uh, relation in uh, using terms that sometimes mean nothing and sometimes mean precisely the opposite of what is really going on in the economic system. If we are talking about inflation, what we mean is that the government increases the quantity of money in order to spend more than it has collected in taxes from the citizens. The government appears on the market with an additional quantity of money and this uh, offering this additional quantity of money in exchange for the various commodities and services which it wants to buy, it brings about a general tendency toward higher prices, or what is the same, toward a lower purchasing power of the individual monetary unit. <coughs> now the governments have great power. They use this power in order to conceal this thing. That means there are people who are teaching, writing, and talking about somebody else's responsibility for the increase in prices for the upward movement of prices. They are very bad people. Uh, various names are given to them. Uh, I don't want to repeat these names. You uh, know them also uh, without my proclaiming. You know. Now, we have to realize historically that the people 
lose everywhere at the beginning as a medium of exchange a definite grant of commodity. Uh, sometimes in, in uh, uh, books about uh, the uh, conditions in various uh, uh, countries in the past, you find uh, uh, mention what kind of goods and commodities were used in, di in different countries at different ages as a general <coughs> medium of exchange, as money. Uh, finally, there remained only the precious metals, gold and silver, and leaving aside silver that also disappeared as a, a medium of exchange in the last centuries. The fact what I mean was there was the commodity gold which was used for as a medium of exchange. And it, the uh, function of the uh, government consisted in producing small pieces of this medium of exchange uh, of which the weight and the content was determined by the government offices and acknowledged by the laws and by the courts. Uh, I cannot enter into the whole history of money. Uh, what resulted was the gold standard. That means that the metal gold was used as a medium of exchange. The advantage of this system is, of course, as of every system of a not governmental money, that an increase in the quantity of money did not depend on the decisions of the government. Uh, the uh, advantage of the gold standard is that the, gold, that the quantity of gold available is independent on the actions and the wishes and the projects and I would say in the, of the, in the crimes of the various governments. Uh, not because gold is yellow and shiny and heavy and so on, but on account of the fact that the production of gold, as the production of everything, depends on factors which cannot be manipulated by the government in the way in which the government can manipulate the production of government paper money, for instance. It does not cost the government to print upon a piece of paper 100 more than it costs to print 10 or 1 on this piece of paper. And the situation of the market, the situation of the of all human exchanges, the whole uh, economic system is undermined, is destroyed by the government when they consider it as advisable to increase the quantity of money by increasing the quantity of government money. This is the whole thing. The government, in doing this, <coughs> refers to certain uh, aspects which are certainly correct from a merely uh, theoretical point of view, but have nothing at all to do with the problem with which we are operating. We had, 
we had by and large again and again attained the situation in which the medium of exchange was something that the government or nobody else could increase at limit as it wanted. As they wanted. And again and again the governments tried to destroy this thing. If we are talk if one is talking about money, one uh, is talking about a field in which the governments were doing the worst things that can be done, in which the government were doing things, destroying the market, destroying human cooperation, destroying all peaceful relations between men. And what we have to realize is this. Every kind of human arrangements is in some way or other connected with money payments. And therefore, if you destroy the monetary system of a country or of the whole world, you are destroying much more than simply one aspect you are destroying in some regards the basis of all interhuman relations when you are destroying the monetary system. We have, for instance, let us talk about the constitutional system. One of the, one of the uh, fundamental institutions of human cooperation is the system of limiting the expenditures of the government to the amount adopted by the representatives of the people. Uh, we have the, uh, we have uh, the government, the government needs money for everything that it wants to spend, and the quantity of money, as the government does not produce anything, this quantity of money has to be collected by the government by taxes. The quantity of taxes that the government is permitted to collect is determined in the constitutional countries by the constitution. It is the voters, it is the people who declare the government has, to, has the right to collect a definite quantity of taxes this right is not only a right, but it's also a duty of the government, and to use these taxes according to the purposes uh, determined by the representatives of the people. All our uh, constitutional uh, uh, laws, all our system of government is based upon this fact that the government is not permitted to do something that disagrees with a system of laws that are representing the moral and the factual ideas and philosophies of our people. But if the government is in a position to increase the quantity of money, all these uh, uh, provisions become absolutely meaningless and useless. <coughs> if it is said the, uh, uh, the government 
has to uh, spend, is entitled to spend a definite amount of money for uh, keeping people in prisons. Uh, this means something. It has a definite, uh, there's a definite reason for it. All our uh, legal provisions are to so, m some extent, more or less, influenced by the fact that this is all, that this is the amount of money which is given to the government for this purpose. But if the government is in a position to increase the quantity of money, then uh, all these things become <coughs> merely a theoretical expression of something which has practically no meaning at all. Uh, the, difference, uh, the difference of between, uh, uh, let us say, the conditions of England in the 18th century and the conditions of uh, uh, other countries, let us say, for instance, Russia in the 18th century, the difference consisted in the fact that while the Russian government was free to take away from its subjects what it wanted, uh, the British government had to comply with the provisions of a set of laws that limited the amount of uh, money that the government had the right to collect from its citizens. And it had to spend this money precisely according to the wishes of the people. <coughs> now, the, uh, situation, all our, uh, the situation of the political aspect of this, <coughs> all our laws, all our provisions concerning interhuman relations and the relations between those parts of the population that has the right to interfere <coughs> by force with the conditions of other people, all these provisions are based upon monetary determinants. And if you undermine these monetary determinants, you, you undermine the whole social structure, nothing is left that, than conditions which uh, have not been approved by anybody, by any group of the population, or by any uh, reasonable uh, taking into account the conditions and the future of interhuman relations. It is uh, assumed that uh, you can protect yourself against the uh, factors that bring about out of these inflationary conditions uh, destruction of the social system. I want to uh, uh, point out how this really works in some definite cases. People uh, think that uh, after all uh, changes in the purchasing power of the monetary unit uh, are uh, beneficial to some people or to other people or to all people, we may see how it is. 
The government inflates. The government brings about uh, an increase in the quantity of money in the way which I pointed out before. And this brings about a tendency toward higher prices. What is the result? What does this mean that there are higher prices? At, uh, the, uh, uh, everybody realizes that uh, this means uh, different things for different groups of people. It means that some people, as the, pri as the prices uh, of the things which they are buying are uh, uh, going up earlier than the prices of those things which they are selling, that some people are suffering for some time, but after some time they need to sell. That means, I would say this, when uh, uh, the, uh, there is inflation in a country, the government increases the quantity of money, uh, then there are sufferings from various people uh, according to the, to the uh, instant in which the higher the prices of those things which they are buying are uh, changing as against the prices of those things which they are selling. Let us say this, the uh, uh, prices of certain things are uh, going up sooner, the prices of other things later, and it can happen that therefore, or it happens continuously, that therefore for some time certain groups are suffering and that only after some time there are two uh, losing this disadvantage by getting higher prices for the things which they are selling. But money has also other functions. Uh, let us uh, give, uh, let us uh, 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 point out the following conditions. People in a country like the United States, people are uh, saving in the years in which they are uh, in full vigor and can earn money, they are saving not only for the, uh, in order to uh, uh, meet uh, some unexpected uh, conditions which could develop one day, they are saving systematically to enjoy uh, in their uh, old age income without working any longer. Uh, people are, uh, 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 for instance, taking out life insurance policies. Uh, they are uh, uh, accumulating uh, 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 accumulating uh, savings deposits in order to and they are uh, making agreements with their employers according to which the employers are uh, uh, bound to pay them later definite amounts <coughs> as pension rights and the same thing. When there is now an inflation going on, all these people are suffering. Suffering because they are losing continually with the 
progress of inflation, but we pro because the progress of inflation means that the purchasing power of the monetary unit decreases. Uh, all debtors are winning at the expense of the creditors. Now people may say, of course, the creditors, the rich, are losing on account of the inflation. And the debtors, the poor, are winning. It's not so bad, say. From this point of view, they may say it is a, the inflation is not bad. The poor debtors are uh, uh, seeing that their debts become smaller every day in real values. And the creditors, or the creditors, the rich, if they are losing a little bit because the prices are going up, this does not make so much. Wonderful. But who are, in our economic system, the creditors and who are the debtors? We have still, we are still thinking of conditions as they were 2,000 years ago in the uh, Rome, in, in the Republic of Rome, in the days of the Gracchi brothers, or we are thinking of the conditions as they prevailed in the Middle Ages or <coughs> until the 19th century, even in other parts, in all parts of the world. Also. We think the debtor is the poor man because he has debts. And the uh, 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 creditor is the rich man. He has, doesn't make, uh, mean very much of him. Unfortunately, the conditions in the capitalistic country, in the capitalistic world of today, are precisely the opposite of it. Who are the creditors and who are the debtors? The creditors, say the people, the creditors are the rich. But, in our system, the big big enterprises is borrowed from the banks and via the banks from the masses. And who are the uh, creditors in this case? The creditors are the people who have savings deposits in the banks. The creditors are the people uh, who are not familiar with big business, who do not know what kind of uh, 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 stock, of common stock of corporations to buy, who prefer to buy bonds, government bonds, and bonds <coughs> of corporations, or should by corporations, mm -hmm. and these people, because precisely, because they are uh, foreign to the conditions of the market, foreign to the conditions of the stock exchange, uh, they are the, the medium classes. When, you, when in the days of, the, of Solon in ancient Athens, or in the days of, uh, in the days of uh, the Gracchi brothers in ancient Rome, or even in the 18th century or the early 19th century, people were talking about creditors and debtors. They were justified to consider the creditor as the wealthier and the 
better as the poor. And therefore, from this point of view, one could say, after all, what does inflation uh, uh, bring about? It improves the conditions of the poor and impairs the conditions of the richer people. But this is no longer true for the capitalistic system of our day. In our day, in the capitalistic system, the creditors are the masses. The people who have savings deposits, who have insurance policies, who have, who have the right to collect later when they retire a pension and so on. All these people are creditors and are therefore interested in the preservation of the purchasing power of the monetary unit. And the richer people who own the uh, common stock uh, of corporations, who own, uh, uh, corpor who own uh, 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 whole enterprises who are not yet uh, being transformed into corporations and so on, these people have normally borrowed money which is also working in their, in their enterprises. It, uh, therefore, it is not uh, uh, correct to assume that the fact that uh, conditions between creditors and debtors are changed, that this fact brings about today the same effects which it used to bring about in pre-capitalistic ages. And therefore, the, the, uh, 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 to give you an example, I will tell you a story. Uh, there was a, a, in when, uh, Austria, once the uh, inflation went up to the end, practically, in which it was uh, uh, the, the monetary unit lost 95 or 99 percent of its purchasing power. Uh, a man, a very successful man, who had, uh, who was the uh, uh, manager of one of the biggest enterprises in the country, told me the story. When I was a young man, he said, when I was in the twenties. And I took out an insurance policy, a life insurance policy. I had a job that, in which I earned very much, more, much more than I needed. And so I took out an insurance policy, a life insurance, in order to make provision for my retirement. And now, I expected at this time that this would make me a well-to-do burger when I will have reached my 60th uh, anniversary when the life insurance policy would be ready for a uh, And now, what happened? As the, price, as, as the prices went up, and the monetary quantity remained the same, I have in fact made for many, many decades savings for whom? For the government to spend and to devastate it, and I have nothing else than now, than a, quant a quantity of money which just uh, is uh, sufficient to cover my expenses for one week, or something like that. We must, re we must uh, realize that, all that we, in the market economy, in the, ca in the capitalistic system, 
have all interhuman relations that are not simply personal and intimate. All interpersonal relations are expressed, made, counted in money terms. And that the change in the, pur in the purchasing power of money affects everybody and not in such a way that you could say it is good if the purchasing power of the money is going up or is going down. All our relations, the uh, relations between individuals and uh, the state and the individuals and other individuals are based on money. One use it uh, to uh, a, a typical, and this is not only true for the capitalistic countries, this is true for all kinds of uh, conditions. Uh, for instance, uh, one of the, in all uh, the predominantly agricultural countries in which the small or medium size uh, farm prevails, it is usual, necessarily usual, that at the death of, a, of the owner of such a farm, one of his children only takes over the farm, and the other children, the brothers and sisters, are inheriting only an ideal part of the farm, and, the, and that the uh, uh, man who gets the farm in the, has to pay out then in the course, in the, uh, in the course of his life, step by step, the share of the inheritance which is theirs. That means that the uh, man who inherits the farm gets on not more and not less than the other members of the family. But when this was, uh, uh, this is made and arranged by transferring the property to this one heir and giving to the others claims in money terms against this heir claims that have to be settled in the course of the years. <coughs> now, if there is an inflationary progress, this means that every day these shares of the other brothers and sisters are shrinking and the share of the men who got the farm is increasing. Uh, and in the same way, you have everywhere changes in the relations of uh, various individuals with other individuals, various enterprises with other enterprises and so on, that are affected by something which couldn't be anticipated in its quantity, which couldn't be anticipated at all and so on. And the whole the whole economic system, everything, every relation between individuals in the capitalistic society is based upon the assumption that the purchasing power of the monetary unit will not change considerably, will almost by and large remain the same. And this, in, 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 in into such a system enters a revolutionary change in the purchasing power of the individual money, all human relations be become distorted. Everything, if the, the uh, every, every uh, relation 
depends, every human interhuman relation depends as far as it is uh, not purely personal, it depends on the purchasing power of the monetary unit and on the assumption that this purchasing power will not use considerably. What these things brought about, I will, I will give you another thing. There was an, another example. There was a, a, in, in a European country, there was a poor boy educated in an asylum for orphans, very well educated because when he had finished his school, and uh, his life in the orphanage. He emigrated to the United States, and in the United States, in the course of a long life, he accumulated a considerable fortune by uh, selling, uh, producing and selling something which was very successful in America. When he, after, when he, after 45 years of living in the United States, he died, he left a considerable fortune. This was certainly exceptional. Not everybody left such a fortune of two million dollars. And, and this man made a will according to which these two million dollars had to be given, have, have to be sent back to Europe in order to establish another kind of such an orphan asylum in which this man had been educated and so on. It was done. The money was sent back to Europe and according to the usages had to be invested in uh, bonds of the government of this country and the interest should be paid every year in order to upkeep this asylum. But the inflation came and the inflation distort, dis made out of this fortune of two million dollars invested in European marks or something like that, zero, simply zero. And you had the same thing, there were in the European universities, for instance, <coughs> that existed already for centuries, there were lots of uh, uh, foundations which were made in the course of the centuries by people who uh, wanted to make it possible for other uh, poor boys to study at the university and to achieve the same things which they had achieved on account of the good education which they had got at these universities. And what happened to all these things? At the, uh, at the University of Vienna in the year 1900, one uh, in, in the following years, one said the government or the universities decided they will reorganize all this. There were hundreds of such small foundations which a very small yearly uh, uh, revenue uh, which were practically not uh, uh, of any value for students who wanted to study. One made mergers of dozens of such things and had therefore about the year 1910 or 15, 1915 one had again the same uh, a number of a smaller number but a number of foundations which could make some sense and use for students and what happened then came in all these countries, in Germany, in France, in Austria, in Italy, and the great inflations, and this inflation destroyed again these investments. <coughs> For whose benefit? For the benefit, of course, 
of the government, you could say, but what did the government do with it? It spent it. It threw it away. It was throwing it away. We must realize that money can operate, can work only if we have a system in which there is a prevention of the government to manipulate the value of the money. We have not to ask whether it is better to have a, a, a a kind of money that has a higher or a smaller purchasing power per unit, what we have to realize is that we don't ought to have a system of money in which the, mo the value of the monetary unit is a, in the hands of the government and the government can operate, manipulate, the money market in a way in which he wants it to. Government is the most important institution, you may say. The government is very important in, in many regards. Perhaps one overrates the importance of the government, but one does not overrate the importance of good government, but if the government destroys the monetary system, it destroys one, perhaps the most important, foundation of uh, interhuman economic cooperation. And therefore, what we ha have to avoid is that the government should be able, should be permitted to increase the quantity of money at, as it wants. You will ask, why should I not say to decrease it? Because there is no government. There is no danger that it should be done. But of course, it means, it means also that they shouldn't decrease, you know. It is necessary to say, to uh, uh, prevent people from destroying the monetary system and therefore the uh, quantities, what we have to do is that the quantity of money shouldn't be manipulated by the government according to the wishes of those people who want to uh, sacrifice a few minutes or a few hours or days or weeks of good life to conditions of a very long disastrous state of affairs. Thank you. Because if you print something on a piece of paper, nobody cares, nobody will say uh, it means something. What the inflation consists in the fact that the government changes a law saying if you have to pay one dollar, the uh, Government, the following government has the right to do it according to its own wishes. If a growing free market economy were on a gold system, the price of gold would constantly rise since its supply is relatively limited. How does or how has what? 
How would the market deal with this constant deflation? There's no danger of inflation, of deflation in this case, you know. The quantity uh, of gold is sufficient because we have such arrangements that does it not, that does it uh, make uh, possible to operate with the quantity of gold existing. In the uh, 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 practically, there is not the problem of the uh, rising uh, purchasing power of the monetary unit, but the opposite problem. Would you explain how governmental expansion of the money supply generates the business cycle? Can an autonomous expansion of the gold supply in a free market generate a business cycle? Uh, you know, the difficulty in giving a lecture of one hour or less and one problem is that people are sometimes asking uh, all questions which cannot be uh, pressed into one hour. The business cycle, the, the business cycle is, has some uh, aspects and which are very closely connected with the problem which we are discussing here, but it is something else. You know. The business cycle is developing out of the intention of people to find some monetary out, some monetary solution of the problem that commodities are not available without any limitations, that we have only limited quantities of everything. This is the connection, but everything else makes it uh, some uh, leads us into some other field which w uh, wouldn't uh, be uh, uh, possible to deal with. The, uh, I realize very well that the uh, uh, connection is very close, is that the uh, business cycle develops also out of the fact that people think that it is possible to improve conditions of the supply of commodities and services by changing something in the books. Uh, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, by changing the rights of different people to get something and by changing the uh, making changes in the books but not in the real world among the real agents. How does the free market in money system keep the supply of money proportional to the supply of goods and services? So, keep it proportional. There is no proportionality needed, you know. You must not, if you have, uh, it is not true that the quantity of uh, commodities the increase in the quantity of the commodities, the increase in wealth and so on, requires an increase in the quantity of money too. The man, uh, the, uh, 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 man who owns more money does not need more money in the pocket. Uh, the uh, uh, quantity of money, of cash holdings, does not increase, uh, it, on the contrary, it sometimes even decreases with the improvement and the progress of wealth. Therefore, it is not true. We are today 
uh, uh, let us say, hundred thousand times in a better conditions than people were in the Middle Ages. But let us, but we do not need hundred thousand times more money. On the contrary, comparatively, we you, uh, compared with the uh, purchasing power of the uh, various uh, assets in uh, commodities and services we have, we need less money and not more. Uh, on a free market, if you had a gold uh, money, to money, would there be an inducement to increase the production of gold, the mining of gold? No. Wouldn't uh, prices, wouldn't people mine gold if it was profitable? You see, the, if you want it, the, uh, uh, in spite, you, for, you are forgetting that the uh, uh, need for real gold, you know, does not depend on the quantity of our wealth, but on the organization of the uh, monetary problems. That means, in a, to, I can only give you in order to uh, direct your attention to a definite point. It means that in the, in comparatively, in the countries in which there was less uh, development of transportation and of uh, uh, business interactions, comparatively the quantity of money was much greater. That means in, uh, uh, in uh, Turkey, in the European parts of the Turkey, let us say of a country like Bulgaria, that until the middle of the 19th century was included in the most backward part of Europe, in every regard. Comparatively with the wealth which in such a Bulgaria existed at that time, there was the quantity of money in circulation much, much greater than it was in Western Europe, where already there were these conditions uh, that made uh, simple payments possible without the use of uh, Since silver is now being consumed in great quantities in photographic and electronic industries, and since gold is also increasingly be con being consumed in aerospace research and in electronics and computers, is there any other possible basis for the money system? Previously, gold and silver were stored in the form of jewelry or artifacts. But now, for the first time, these precious metals are being consumed in irrecoverable uses, inconvertible. That means gold is also used in the metals for other purposes. But we do not, it could be, what the danger is not that there will be a scarcity of gold. The real problem is that perhaps we don't know it. Perhaps one day one would discover a system of increasing the quantity of gold available in such an easy way in which one can increase today the quantity of paper available. Perhaps this will. And then we will have the, these generations will have to solve another problem. But we don't, we can't tell them today what they will have to do because we don't know the conditions under which this thing will be desirable. I am pointing out in my idea of, of uh, money, especially, yes, perhaps it will be possible. Perhaps they we will have one day in such a situation, also the physicists uh, the night today that it is possible, but this we don't want to uh, enter into this problem. How can we make plans for a state of affairs whose various conditions we do not know? We know on, we assume only that one 
condition will prevail. But we don't know anything else. Uh, one more question. This is the $64,000 question. How can we get the United States back on the gold standard? <laughs> this is a very important thing, and it needs only one thing. It doesn't need anything else than a change in the public opinion. Uh, if the, today public opinion takes it for simply for granted, if the government doesn't have enough money, then it prints it, you know. We, have, we are talking about the deficits which are covered by uh, additional money, if this were something quite natural. Why is it, in the, uh, it we are making a great difference between a government that prints an additional quantity of money and, uh, uh, and uh, 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 parliamentary institutions uh, that uh, permit this, and the case of an, uh, uh, of an uh, individual that makes the same things. Why is it possible, why is it permitted, why is it permissible to a government to increase the quantity of money? There are many other things which uh, uh, governments are not permitted to do. The main, the, the main thing is that we have to realize that government too must be subject to definite rules of what is permitted and what is not permitted.